Hello everyone, welcome to 3 Minutes Engineering Concepts. The idea of this website, this channel is to explain any engineering concept in 3 minutes. And the, we would be able to explain any fundamental to advanced concept in mechanical engineering and material science. So if you like the idea, if you like our videos, please like, share and subscribe to get regular updates. Also please share it with your other colleagues and students so that they can benefit from it. In today's video, I am going to speak about the fundamentals of the mechanical deformation. For any material, you can use the same definitions, but it, the response of the material changes from one material to another material. In, in a fundamental way, you can define them, you can classify the mechanical deformation into three stages elastic deformation, plastic deformation, followed by fracture. So, let's say if you get a material which you want to apply for a certain application, then you have to take it to the lab and get a stress strain response of that material under different types of loadings. So this is a typical sketch on the left hand side of our typical uniaxial tension testing machine. What you, you fit your sample there, you pull your sample and you measure the forces and the displacements in the material. You divide the force with the cross-sectional area and you get the stresses while you divide the change in length with the original length and you get the strains. So as soon as I start pulling the sample my stress starts to increase as you see here and let's see if i go so i'm going in this direction and if i unload my sample at this point then it will follow the same path and will go back to the initial state and this is called the elastic behavior in the material response curve once i my stress reaches to a yield strength of the material then this is the onset of plastic deformation or permanent deformation and after this i will have a permanent deformation in the material so during this permanent deformation, you will have still a raise in stresses, and this is due to the strain hardening. And if I stop somewhere in the middle of plastic deformation, and if I unload my sample now, then I will always have some permanent deformation remaining in my material. I call it epsilon v in this case. If I keep on pulling my sample, then I will reach to a point which is the peak of my stress strain response, and that's called the ultimate strength of the material, after which my material becomes unstable and it will show some kind of necking, as you see here in the figure on the left hand side, uh, until you reach to the point where it, you will have complete fracture in the material itself. If you look at different types of materials which have different alloying elements, heat treating processes, and manufacturing processes, then you will get these different types of curves for those. And you can see different alloying elements and, and also heat treating and manufacturing process change the ductility of the material, which is ductility means the failure strain, which is the fract at the fracture point. While you also see that your strength is really strongly influenced, which is, is this yield strength, is strongly influenced by the alloying elements, heat treating processes, and manufacturing process. However, you also find out that your stiffness is not affected by these processes itself. I hope this gives you some idea about the basics of the fundamental of the basics of the mechanical deformation in metals if you want to apply the same principles on non-metallic materials like composites and ceramics then you won't have this plastic part and you will ultimately end up failing at somewhere during the elastic zone and this is your fracture stress in those cases if you like the idea please like and share this video and if you have any any concepts which you don't like or you don't understand then please write them in the comments and i will i will come back with the videos on that thank you very much for watching